Hey folks, my name's Steve and welcome to Scotia Astro. It's been a while since my last upload, but I've taken some time out after the Christmas period to be with family, and it's also given me some time to plan out my content and goals for 2023. My first goal is sitting right here. It's a big brand new refractor from Bresser, and it's the AR-127L, which I'm planning to use for some solar imaging work alongside the Skywatcher 72 ED DS Pro that I've been using up to this point. I'll do a more in-depth first light video when I've had a chance to play around with it and when I finally get some sun up here in Scotland, so bear with me, we could be in for a bit of a wait. But for now I thought I'd share some details about it, why I chose it and some of the modifications that I'm planning to do for imaging the sun. The AR-127L is a 127mm achromatic refractor with a focal length of 1200mm and a focal ratio of f9.4. According to Bresser, the optics are multi-coded and they should provide sharp, high contrast views of the planets, the moon and other targets. More on this after my first real world tests. There's a good range of included accessories, but I don't plan on using most of them for my solar work anyway. But it's nice that they're here. The scope came well packaged and there wasn't a mark on it when it arrived at my door. So nice job Bresser and the couriers in keeping my scope safely snug in its box. The AR-127 comes equipped with a sturdy single speed hexafocuser and my copy here is buttery smooth. The scope sits in a 44mm Vixen dovetail plate and there's also a handle at the top to help lift your scope onto your mount. Speaking of weight, the scope comes in at just under 8 kilos with the included accessories, but I'll likely be adding more to this with the modifications that I'm planning. More on this later. Other accessories include a 26mm plus a light piece, a one and a quarter inch diagonal, an 8x50 finder scope, a smartphone adapter and a solar filter. There's also some threaded adapters for different applications and attachments. So why did I choose this scope? Well, it's a great price for starters, and it might appeal to many of you out there, even if you do different types of imaging and observation than me. I picked this up for just under £300 brand new, and I'm seriously impressed with the quality feel and included extras at this price and focal length. As the majority of owners seem positive on it, I thought I'd grab one and see for myself. I think this scope would be a great visual instrument, and after many, many trolls through the forums and social media, I learned that many folks were happy with the AR-127. Lots of people highlighted the smooth and solid hexafocuser, so for the price, I think it's a great buy. But as I say, I'll mainly be using this for solar imaging. Up to now, I've been happily using a Skywatcher 72 ED DS Pro with a Daystar Quark and a ZW-174mm camera. They've been a great match and I've had loads of fun with them, but like many of you out there, I've got a bad dose of aperture fever and I started to look for a large but affordable scope for some high resolution solar imaging. The AR-127 is giving me 1200 millimeters versus the Skywatcher's 420 millimeters, so I'm excited to get in tight for some high resolution views of the sun. I've also recently picked up a Player One Apollo M Max as a secondary mono camera for solar work and according to the specs from Player One this camera works best at higher focal ratios of around f30 to f35. My Skywatcher 72's native focal length is f5.8 so with the Quark's 4.2 times internal Barlow it was giving me a focal ratio of around f25. The AR-127 on the other hand has a native focal length of f9.4 so with the Quark attached I'll be nearing f39ish so I'm hoping it'll be a good match. If you want to keep updated on my progress with this new scope and follow my astrophotography adventures from here in the UK, then please consider subscribing and hit the bell notification below so you don't miss any of my future uploads. Thanks for your support, it really helps my channel to grow. In terms of modifications, I'm planning in a few changes to the scope so I can streamline my solar imaging sessions. You can find links to all the gear from this video in the description below, so go check that out if you want to have a look. As many of you know, I live in the UK and we aren't blessed with hundreds of days of sunshine like other parts of the world. So the mods that I'm planning for this scope are geared towards saving time and being efficient during my imaging sessions. First of all, I'm going to replace the Universal Vixen dovetail plate with a beefier 355mm Losmandi plate from Skywatcher. I've had several of these in other scopes and they're rock solid, so I highly recommend them. The Losmandi plate's hopefully going to give me more stability for imaging, especially given the length of this scope. Although the Hexafocuser looks great and other users have praised it, I really needed an autofocus solution for my use case, and from experience I know that manually focusing for solar imaging is not fun. I've been looking for a solution from many of the astro forums, but many folks seem to be using the AR-127 as a visual scope, and they seem to be satisfied with the manual native hexafocuser. I decided to go straight to source and reached out to Brescia Direct to see if there was any solutions that they could help me with. Huge shout out to Karen Smith at Brescia for answering my questions, and top marks for your customer service guys, thanks very much. Karen advised that I could use a ZWO EAF and sent me some helpful guides and instructions on this, so I'll be fitting this to the scope now. I've used the ZWO EAF and other scopes and have been really pleased with them, so it's nice to see that I can use something I'm familiar with on a brand new scope. Finally, I grabbed a battery click lock adapter for the hexafocuser to help keep my imaging train solid while the scope and mount track the sun. 
The quirk and camera can add a fair bit of heft to the focuser, so the click lock seemed like a worthwhile upgrade, and I've been really happy with the other ones I've used on other scopes. So that's my first look at the Bresser AR-127L, and I'll be back soon with a first light video and in-depth review, so stay tuned for that. Let me know in the comments below if you've used any Bresser products and how you get on with them. Stay well, take care of yourselves, and clear skies to you all.